So today I'm going to show you how to create tests against Android and iOS devices. So let's start out with Android. What I'm going to do is begin by creating a new project and I'm just going to choose the Android applications option in the create new project wizard here. Now once you've chosen that, Test Complete's going to say, okay, what Android application would you like to actually test? So I'm going to click the add button here and browse out to my Android package file, which you may know as the APK file right here. All right, now, it's important to note that your Android apps and your iOS apps both need to be instrumented in order for Test Complete to work with them. And there are complete instructions on how to actually do that instrumentation uh, included in the text associated with this video. I'm also going to choose to have Test Complete automatically deploy the application to the device uh, when the test runs so that I don't need to worry about always having the most current version of the app uh, on my device ahead of time. That done, we're just going to finish walking through the wizard as normal. And now our project has been created and we're ready to start creating tests against our Android device. So the first thing we need to do in order to create tests is click this show mobile screen button. And this is going to bring up a list of all the devices you currently have connected to your computer via USB cable. So right now I currently have a Nexus 7 and a Samsung Galaxy tablet. I'm going to work with the Nexus tablet here. And so now Test Complete is giving us a view into what the device looks like at this point in time. The screen you're looking at right now is not an emulator. This is the actual screen of the device that's connected to my laptop. Now, in order for Test Complete to work with your mobile devices, you need to install a special agent on the device. And that's done simply by clicking this button right here. And now that will install the Test Complete agent onto your device. We also recommend that you uh, enable the Android agent keyboard so that you can more effectively test with your devices. So that done, I'm just going to click the Home button here. So now the first thing we need to do is tell Test Complete that we're going to run actions against a mobile device. And the way we do that is by using this mobile select device command. I'm just going to drag that right onto my test here. And I'm going to say we're going to do this against the Nexus 7. Once the device has been selected, we want to run our application on that device. And that's going to happen via the good old tested apps command that we all know and love. I'm just going to say I'm going to run the orders application here. And now what I'm going to do is just run this test as I have it so that I can automatically get the newest version of my application down onto my device and then Test Complete will invoke the application uh, on the device as well. So there we go. We see that the test has finished out and now my sample orders application has launched on my Android device. Fantastic. So now we can start performing actions against the device and the way we're going to do that is by using the on-screen action command. So I'm just going to drag this on here and I'm going to point at the new button. So what I'm going to do is just drag this guy right here, choose the new button, test complete will refresh, and then it will fetch back a reference to that button. There we go. And then I'm going to say touch button. Now just like what we have with regular Windows and web-based applications, Test Complete is showing us a list of all the methods that are available for this particular control. So instead of things like click or click button, we now have touch and touch button. So I'm going to say touch button to perform a touch against that new button. And we'll finish that out. Okay, and now I'm going to actually do that on screen. So it's important to note that you can manipulate the screen of your Android device using the keyboard and mouse of your computer. So I just used my mouse to click the new button. I didn't actually have to tap that on the screen. So now for my next action, I want to select an item from this pick list. So again, I'm going to use an on-screen action. I'm going to point right at the pick list object there. You can see that's a select product spinner. 
And now, much like what we have with a combo box in a Windows or a web application, Test Complete has a touch item command for the drop down boxes on a tablet or a phone. So I'm going to say I'm going to touch a particular item, and that item is going to be a string called screensaver. Now I'm going to actually emulate that over here as well. Next up, I'd probably want to verify that my total was correct. And we can do that with a property checkpoint, just like we always have. This is going to work exactly the same, where we go in and verify the text of a component. I'm going to verify it's control text equals 20 is fill in the rest of the fields here. So I'm going to use additional on-screen actions in order to make that happen. Okay, so I fast-forwarded a bit. You can see I've filled in all of the information into my mobile screen. And I've got the appropriate set text and touch commands for the fields and buttons uh, accordingly. Now the last thing I want to do is have my test click the home button on the device here. So what I'm going to do is put in one last on-screen action, and I'm going to select the device object here inside the on-screen action dialog. And inside the method section, I'm going to search for a command called press button. And in this key dropdown, I'm going to say press the home constant. Okay, and that's it. Now my test is ready to go. So I'm going to actually click the home button. So let's go ahead and run this test. And now you can see Test Complete has reinstalled the application on the device and it is going through and performing all the actions uh, that we just defined. Okay, so I fast forwarded a bit again. You can see that our device has returned to the home screen. And here we've got the detailed list of all the actions that Test Complete performed in our log file. So we can see that we invoked the orders application, we touched our buttons, I'm going to actually close the mobile screen here so that we can see the rest of the, the data. So we see we click the new button and we also have the screenshots of how we interacted with the device as well. So here's our drop down list, here's verifying that our property checkpoint was successful and so on. So Test Complete will give you the same level of reporting for mobile applications as it does for regular Windows and web-based applications. So now that we have the test running successfully on one device, we want to run it on another device. So let's pop back to our test. I'm going to bring back the mobile screen. And you remember, I have two devices connected here, so let's bring up the Samsung Galaxy tablet. There it is. And so now I want to have Test Complete run this test on the Galaxy tablet. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is make sure that I've installed the agent on this device. And with that done, I'm going to change this guy right here. I'm going to change the select device to be the Galaxy tablet. And that's the only change I'm going to make. Now I'm going to show our mobile screen again, and I'm going to run the test. And now Test Complete's going to kick off, and it's going to re replay those actions that we created against the Nexus, but it's going to replay them here on the Galaxy. So you can see that it's already uh, loaded the application onto the Galaxy, and now it's going through and filling out our orders form uh, using the commands we created against the Nexus. Okay, so I've fast forwarded a bit, and one thing I want to call your attention to is right here, the first line in the log is stating that the device with the name GTN5110 has been made current. That's the uh, underlying identifier for the Galaxy tablet. So we were able to run this test on the other system successfully. Now that we know the test runs successfully on both devices, let's modify our test so that it will automatically execute the test on both the Nexus and then execute it on the Galaxy tablet. So the way we do that is come into our test case here and we're going to create a device loop. I'm just going to drag this onto my test case I'm going to say I'm going to iterate through some specific devices. I just want to iterate through my Nexus and through my Galaxy. We'll say finish. I'm actually going to close the mobile screen here. And I'm going to 
disable the select device command. I don't need that anymore. And so I'm going to select all these actions and put them underneath that loop. So now when this runs, it's going to kick off against the Nexus. It'll run the application, do all these actions, and then flip over to the Galaxy. And if we had other Android devices here, we could uh, just continue looping through all of them. So now that we've seen how to interact with various controls inside of our applications on our devices, let's talk about how we can record gestures against those devices. Maybe you want to zoom in on a photo. So as you can see here, I have a photograph of Superman on my Galaxy tablet. And let's say I want to record zooming in on that. What I'm going to do is bring back my mobile screen, connect to the Galaxy tablet, and then I'm going to click this record gesture button. The test complete says, okay, great, what do you want to call your gesture? And I'm going to call this zoom in on Superman. And now I can perform whatever actions I want on my device. So I'm going to zoom in on Superman here. There we go, there's my zoom. And then I'm going to come back in a test complete and I'm going to click stop recording. Now when I do that, test complete stores that zoom here inside my default gesture collection. So I'm going to scoot this guy uh, just off to the side for the moment. And you'll notice here that these two dots, these two animated GIF dots, are showing me where I touched initially and how my fingers moved across the screen of the device. The other thing to mention here is we can control how fast your gestures play back. So if you want to replay them slower or faster, you can modify this. I'm just going to set this back to 100 so that it will play back uh, at top speed. Now, I'm going to go back to the default zoom level on my device here. So now let's make a new test that's going to uh, play that gesture. So the first thing we want to do is set our device, and then we're going to play a gesture. In this case, we'll play zoom in. Superman. All right. And now, if we run the test, and if you watch on the camera there, you'll see that we will zoom in on Superman replaying that gesture. 